So when I was approached a few months ago to talk on the diaspora bringing, I was like, am I diaspora? Because I'm actually homegrown, you know? Born in Zaria, bred in Kaduna, went back to Zaria for medical school, came back to Kaduna to specialize in ophthalmology at the National Eye Center. Well, while I was doing that, um, I couldn't escape the developmental nature of eye health. There were people that were blind that came to us. We were in our white coats, sitting in our very cool clinics, and waiting for patients to come in. And they came in just a day too late. I had my mentors, you know, Professor Abiosi, Dr. Hannah Fowl. But then the questions started coming. We were on regular um, outreaches, but we needed to go to places that were not on the list. And that was what brought Eye Care Foundation. We thought we needed to take eye care to places where they could not come to us. We wanted to give access to people that could not afford the sight-restoring cataract surgeries that we do. Then, after we formed eye care, I thought we needed structure. That was the trigger for my you know, first diaspora encounter. I went for an MSc at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. I got spiraled into the system. It was like something sucking me in, because as soon as I came back, MSc is just one year. It just you know, accounts for just a year away. But as soon as I came back, the National Survey for Blindness and Visual Impairment started. And I joined as a team leader. And you can see we went to 310 clusters around the country, every part of the country, from Boni to Ilela, from Madagali, you know, to Ikorodu, Chris and Cross. All the dots that you see are places we have been to. So I knew Nigeria very well academically, medically, academically. So, um, during the survey, you know, Nigeria is a beautiful place. There are so many things to see. The Ikari, you know, the Idanri Hills. We went to every city in the, con in the country. There are beautiful sites and nice things to see. But the green statistics remained. For every four out of five of the two million people that are blind in Nigeria, their blindness is needless. It is preventable or treatable, but they remained blind. So the question started coming, and then now again it was time for me to go out, find the answers. So that was what triggered my time away. And I went to um, the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine again, this time for in-depth, you know, searching for answers, which meant a PhD. A PhD is self-driven, is um, focused research, but it takes a longer time. And unlike some of us that are early starters, I'm a late starter. So by the time I went, my children were young, and that meant I moved with my family. So I moved away. So that was when I love London. We stayed in London for a long time. Um, my children went to school there. And London offered a lot of things for me. It natured my inquisitive mind. 
my professor Claire at the time, she honed my scientific writing skills. And Stata, for those of you that know Stata, Stata gave me the analytical skill sets that differentiates me from my peers. So here I was with answers for the research, because during the time that um, we did the survey, we offered surgery to um, people that had cataract blindness, but we couldn't do much about people that had glaucoma. But when I went to do my PhD, the answers started coming. I now understood why the judge, who is a legal luminary, you know, a high-placed person, well-educated, um, could afford health care, but still came to us with one eye blind from glaucoma. A state governor, a commissioner of finance, a nurse, the woman in the village, the farmer, they would come to us with blindness from glaucoma. Why? So, Glaucoma didn't have respect for um, poverty or richness or education. But my stay out there gave me the answers. But it was time to come back because I now had the answers. Um, the greatest pull factor, actually, that brought me back. Well, I guess it's different because I went for a reason. I found the reason and I came back. There are some of my colleagues that have um, left since we graduated, you know. That's about uh, how many years ago? 30 years ago or so. So since we graduated, they left, and they're still out there. And they're still thinking, how do I get back? So we are thinking, first of all, you can engage yourself in NGOs, you know, because that is what they do, but that's the go and come thing. But we are thinking more of health, developmental, systemic solutions. So when I came back um, with my answers, the second pull factor was human capital development. And being a senior lecturer at the University of Abuja College of Health Sciences before I left, and then when I came back, I'm coordinating the setup of the medical school at um, Bayes University, which is a private hospital. I felt that medical education is very important. And that is another avenue that we would like you to come back. Because in Nigeria, going by the WHO statistics, we are in deficit of about 400% of medical doctors. If we continue the output at the present rate, it will take us 100 years to reach the recommended number of doctors. In the UK, for example, the statistics say that 5,000 or so doctors are from um, Nigeria. They form the second largest international doctor community in the UK. But the need is here. And I believe that research and information are transformative in any institutional development. So, in 2008, I'd like to just recall some encounter um, before I left in 2008. We wanted some funds for eye care. We wanted to, that was after the survey, we needed to escalate the eye care. Then there was no budget for the eye care line, even though we requested for it. So the next option was, shall we go to the MDGs at the time? Because they were doing things like that. So we had a beautiful proposal to develop, you know, health systemic development, equip centers, provide for surgeries, and do that. So we went with our paper, our proposal to the MDGs. And she looked at it and said, Nice, it looks nice, but I just came from the villa. Have a look at this big fat book and tell me where there is I, and that will help me support your programs. So we sat down, myself with Professor Babalola at the time, 
who was the OSN um, president. So we took about 30 minutes, page by page, and there was no single one word of I. That's E-I-E. -E. There was no single one word. <laughs> so she said, she just did this. What, what do you want me to do? And I just looked. And then she goes, do you have data? I, my eyes sparkled. I was like, yes. This is the result from the National Survey of Blindness and Visual Impairment. And that was what saw us through. And indeed, she approved the one billion over process, you know. But the story of how it was spent is um, a story for another day. <laughs> yeah, governments changed, you know, and she left the office and all that. So, so let's fast forward, you know, 2016. I came to realize that that document she gave me was the National Strategic Health Development Plan, the first one, and there was no I, E-I-E. -I -E. So 2016, I had the evidence, I have the information, thanks for my study in the diaspora, and we had our ears to the ground, we leveraged on our networks, and then we ensured that we now have I in the National Strategic Health Development Plan of um, 2017, the new one. It was just recently launched a few months ago. And then we're also talking to the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency to put eye health on the agenda, and they're doing that. The National Health Insurance um, Scheme to put eye health on the agenda, and they're doing that. And the Commonwealth Policy Brief, Nigeria has you know, um, accented to it. It is what I wrote, and it has a lot of um, Africa um, perspective into it. So I value and encourage teamwork. Most of the work that I have done is actually teamwork. Using the evidence that I have to translate evidence, information into policy and planning, and it is happening. And that is one thing I got. Advocacy is something I do as the um, Chair for International Agency for Prevention of Blindness. And I thought I needed to dust, dust off my connections and learn from the greatest. I mean, the A's and B's of this world, for them, advocacy is a s simple sheet of systems. You know, they check, they tick, until they get to their goals. And um, after that encounter with high-level advocacy, other doors opened. So when we talk about the diaspora bringing, to me, it provided answers to my questions. And to me, I'm able to give back to what um, I thought I should. If we don't develop our own healthcare systems, who does? And the only way we can do that is three ingredients. Passion, integrity, and information. And that is what I have gained from the diaspora. It has made me transform from just charity work from eye care to now providing evidence for policy and planning. And I can see it happening. So, and then medical education. So th this is one aspect that I believe that the diaspora can actually help. Medical education and translating research agendas into policy. Thank you. Thank you.